Money for spend, it no for dash way. I've said this repeatedly on this channel. Why? Because I believe we should get to a place where we have money that we can buy what we want, but we choose to put it in something that we like or something that we enjoy. And we do so in not just a responsible way, but even in a calculated way, because we're using a budget to guide our spending decisions. And we're not just doing so on a whim or buying the first thing that comes to mind or impulse shopping on a whole. The bottom line is that for you to be able to achieve financial freedom, you need to develop money management as a character trait. And the only way to do that is by getting additional financial knowledge. And when you get it, to use tools like a budget to manage how you spend that money. Now in our household, I'm the CFO, which is a chief financial officer for our family. So the money comes in from different sources and then I use a budget to determine where it goes and how much we're saving or investing, how much we're putting towards retirement, towards our emergency fund and how much we're using to take care of bills. And today in my capacity as CFO, I will be sharing with you exactly what we spend in a month living in Jamaica and with the lifestyle that we have. Now, I already shared how to spend a hundred thousand Jamaican dollars, which is about six hundred and sixty seven dollars. So this will give you another perspective because I'm literally going to take you through my monthly budget that I use to manage our family's income and expenditure. Now, let me first say that for confidentiality reasons, because my income is not the only income in the income line, that number is hypothetical. I just plugged something in there that made sense from an expense perspective, but it's not real. All the other numbers are either on point or pretty close because some of them I have to estimate. Now this budget template that I'm going to use here that I also used in this video where I showed you how to save from 100,000 Jamaican dollars per month or the equivalent of about 667 US dollars is available on Goffo. I'll put the link in the description below so you can get a copy and use it but only if you think it's going to add value. If you're going to get the copy of this budget and put it down then don't bother to get it to begin with but if you believe that there are opportunities for you to use a more structured template that will not just give you an opportunity to forecast what you're going to spend each month each week or each year depending on which timeline you choose to abide by but will also give you an opportunity to compare what you actually spent with what you forecasted and call out the variances in a graphical and a way that allows you to quickly realize where your problem areas are and as such to fix it you can go ahead and get this budget template for all my club members or patreon as you know this budget template is free so whenever you log on to patreon just scroll down and you'll see it there and you can download it at your convenience it's so great to have you back, my YouTube family, my rock stars. Thank you for returning. It's really good to see you, and I'm looking forward to today's interaction. That said, class is now in session. Now, let me first say that I am very proud of this budget because our expenses have reduced by more than 50% over the past few years because we made a decision to be debt-free. We got rid of all our mortgages, all our loans, 
And this was to facilitate me stepping away from a nine to five job and doing my own thing. We just didn't want the burden of those big expenses to limit our cash flow. So we decided to get rid of them. And as such, our expenses have reduced dramatically. Now the expenses on this budget fall in 12 different categories. Housing, transportation, food, utilities, clothing and accessories, medical, health, other insurance, investments and retirement, personal, debt, loans, kids costs, charity, entertainment and subscriptions. So let's jump right into it. And my God, I, this is probably the third time I'm saying let's jump right into it. But we're really going to jump right into it this time, my rock stars, I promise. Now here is the budget template and like I said the income is hypothetical but the expenses are either very close or are on point. So there's a summary that's automatically generated here, a graphical summary that is, that shows our cash flow. It shows monthly income what we projected we would earn and what we actually earned, monthly expenses, what we projected we would spend and what we actually spent. Because we're just reviewing the template, I'm going to assume that exactly what we said we would have earned and exactly what we said we would have spent is what we actually did. So basically the projected column will be equal to the actuals column in all cases. Now there's a cash flow summary at the top that will show you what you have coming in what your expenses are and what your disposable cash is, which means after you have considered every expense along with your savings and investment, this is the money you have to play with and to do whatever you want because it's a surplus. So if you go down, you'll see the income. Again, it's hypothetical. So we're assuming a 25,000 US dollars per month income here. And let's start talking through the expenses. So the first expense line is mortgage and rent. And like I said earlier, we don't have any mortgage or rent. Let me clarify, this budget is for our primary residence. It doesn't include businesses or any other household or residence that we spend money on. It's limited to our primary residence. So we have zero mortgage or rent for our primary residence. When we had mortgage, it was anywhere from two to 3,000 US dollars per month, depending on what time frame and how long ago this was. And before we went in and renegotiated our interest rates for our mortgage with our bank and got them to reduce it significantly. The second line item is for home rental insurance or property insurance. So I believe in insurance. I'm sure you know that by now and you probably have watched this video that speaks to all the different insurance policies that we have as a family but we pay between property insurance and property tax about $334 per month for our primary residence. Now, I must tell you the great news about living in the bush or living in somewhere that's considered rural, although I guess my neighbors probably will take offense to me saying that, but nobody can tell me it's not rural when occasionally when I'm on these videos, you hear the cows mooing. Sometimes you hear the goats. And this morning for a long time, I had not heard a rooster, but I did in the quietness of the morning. So we live a bush. And because we live a bush, or for those who don't speak Patwa, because we live outside of the town, our property taxes are a whopping one US dollar per month for our main residence. Yeah, I can see the envy in your eyes because you're probably paying significantly more than we're paying, but you chose to live where property taxes are high. That's actually something I consider when I'm acquiring property to make sure that our property tax is as low as is possible. Let's keep going. 
So 334 for insurance and property tax, then savings and investment. You guys know that that for me, I treat it like a bill because I do not want to compromise how much we invest or save. So I put it on the budget as an expense. And my goal is always to invest or save at least 50% of our income. And as such, we have 10,000 US dollars here per month. For groceries, there are a few of us that's living here. So we pay about $800 per month between fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as buying stuff in a supermarket. Now for our telephone, we have the cheapest postpaid plan from our provider. So we only pay about 4,500 Jamaican dollars per month each. And for our home phone, which is a part of our package that comes from our network provider to include internet and cable, I'm assuming that if I were to break that up, it's a small percentage and that is listed in several lines. In this line, I'm assuming about 60 US dollars per month. Then for electricity and cooking gas, as you know, we took on a much more efficient approach to our electricity and we installed a solar solution and we have completed phase one and our bill has dropped from 122,000 Jamaican dollars per month to about 30 plus thousand dollars per month when we're done with phase two we're hoping that it will be less than a thousand dollars but we'll see we do use cooking gas and that actually lasts a very long time because our oven is electric and we do a lot of baking instead of frying or stove top cooking oh another benefit of rural living is we don't have sewage so we have to dig our own pits and as such we don't have that double up on our water bill and all we pay for water is about six thousand jamaican dollars per month which works out to about forty dollars we do harvest rainwater, and i'm sure you have seen my garden the good thing about living in the bush is that we get rainfall almost every single day so our water consumption is significantly less and when sewage is not added it's not doubled for cable tv it works out to about 80 dollars with that package that we have and for internet it's about eight $80 as well. Now, again, you have seen my garden, so I have to invest in fertilizer and other gardening tools. So I have a budget for that of about 33 US dollars per month. It does add up over time. And for home repairs, which owning a home is a stress when it comes to repairs. You would have seen the damage to the roof that I spoke about earlier in this video. And it's because of expenses like that and other ones that tend to creep up in addition to just maintaining our home, painting regularly and fixing things that are broken or that deteriorate over time, we're spending about $150 on average per month. My son and stepson are grown so we don't have any child care expenses and they're gainfully employed or earning from other sources. And for pets, I don't really have any expenses but pet food which I'll cover later on. Vehicle payment is the next line item which like I said on our path to achieving mission debt free we got rid of all our loans to include vehicle payments so we don't have any debt related to any vehicle that anyone in this household drives vehicle insurance that's real it's not going away and it's about 188 dollars per month across all the vehicles and for petrol i very rarely leave home or i'm very rarely on the road but of course other members of our family need to travel and sometimes they do go out of town frequently so we're spending about 533 dollars per month and then for vehicle maintenance because of the package that we have from our dealer where in some cases we have up to five years of free maintenance the only thing that we have to repair in those five years are things like tires and brakes those things that are not related to 
our typical servicing because that is included when you buy a vehicle new from the dealer that we purchase vehicles from. That said, I typically allocate about a hundred US dollars per month for that expense. Then there's fitness and registration for our vehicles. That's about $25 per month. And then there's personal care, which is about $200. That's for me to go to the hairdresser occasionally to get my nails done when I want to do fusion lash. It comes from this bucket as well. And if I'm using extensions, it also comes from this bucket. For education, courses, and subscription, that's about $75 because I believe in continuous education. And as such, if I see a good course or I see somebody sharing a good lesson on a platform like Skillshare, I do have my subscription. We also have the typical subscription like a Netflix. But on top of that, I have my documentary channel subscription, which is Curiosity Stream. I have Apple Music, Canva, and Vector, all the things I use for YouTube, which actually add up over time. I also use Grammarly because I am very bad with grammar and you can tell from my speaking. So whenever I'm writing, I definitely need help from an application that will improve my grammar and my vocabulary. And other graphics apps, Amazon Prime, Microsoft Office, all of that I'm saying comes up to about $75 per month. I'm not missing any expense here, guys. We're accounting for every single penny. And that's one of the lessons I want you to take from this exercise. No matter how small it is, try to keep track of it because those small things oftentimes will creep up on us. And soon we're paying for subscriptions that we should have canceled. And we're wondering, where's this money going? And it's something like that. Insurance, again, you know I believe in insurance, so we have every kind of insurance that you can think of outside of the house, the vehicle, but critical illness, life, all kind of insurance. Student loans, we don't have any, we don't have any loans. Taxes is a real line item at about $4,000, which is what I'm forecasting because I am self-employed and as such, I need to pay taxes on my income. So that's about $4,000 per month that I'm forecasting, but I'm also forecasting a lot of money in earnings and the reality may be totally different, but we'll see. Eating out, it's not something that we do sporadically. We actually plan for it so I can budget it. And our budget is $250 because despite what many people think, my husband is actually an introverted extrovert. He loves to go out. I'm the homebody. He's the one who uses 90% of this budget. I hope he doesn't watch this video. Anyway, hobbies, $50. This includes things like gym or just fun things that we like to do. Gifts or charity, you always have to give back. If you learn nothing else from this exercise, ensure that you put some money in your budget to help somebody else or to help an organization. Or if you are a church goer, you do so through tithes or tithes, however you say that word. But make sure that you're giving back in some way, shape or form. Pet food, like I said earlier, it's down here at $44 per month. We have an expense line for travel and vacation of $100. But what we do is whatever we have in excess, we put it in an account. And from that, we'll travel and go on vacations. Because I think vacations and traveling is a luxury. So only if I have excess money that we should overspend beyond what is budgeted. Housekeeper and gardener, I'm going to say about $400 each. That's not accurate, but they may be watching this and I'm not going to share their income to the world. My business, I can share. Everybody else's, I don't have any right to share. Emergency fund, despite our insurance and our savings, we still allocate money every month towards an emergency fund. And of course, we have a retirement fund because we're now in our 40s and 50s. And despite, again, our investments, our businesses, everything, we want to make sure that when we get to age 65, there's additional money coming in in the event we choose to not get out of bed for the rest of our lives. 
For clothing and accessories, I probably do a big family shopping every five years and then we only buy necessary pieces in between but I don't believe in spending too much money in clothing and shoes quite frankly I am good with repeating and so is the rest of my family so I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses from a clothing and accessory perspective so that's a total of $23,726 and from the hypothetical income of $25,000. You'll see here in the budget summary exactly how the money was spent for these major categories. And you'll see here graphically exactly where the money went. So immediately you can see that 47%, which is the majority, went into savings and investment. And the next largest numbers were here in green, which is charity, and here in brown, which is utilities. You'll see the surplus down here, which is where it says money left over. And this money we use to do anything. Now on this next tab, if I had plugged in what we actually spent versus what we said we would have spent, it would have shown it here as a comparison, but we assume the same for both. And the other tabs are just more details about budgeting. And on the last tab, you actually get a budget guide. So those are the expenses that we spend on every month. And I have deliberately eliminated some of my husband's expenses for confidentiality reasons. I only shared what I absolutely can share. And every time I look at this budget, all I can think about is where I'm coming from. When I could not rub two pennies together to make a dollar. Coming from a state of poverty and being here today, I know it's God's will. But it took a lot of sacrifice. It took being strategic and using tools like a budget to ensure that I managed our money and could get to this place where we have a surplus, we can invest or save 50% and we can live a life that we're comfortable with. If you take nothing else from this video, I want you to take that. No matter where you are starting, you can get to wherever you would like to go. You just need to make the right level of sacrifices and commitment. Until next time, my YouTube family, walk good. Someone's gonna help me, ain't nobody like that